Attention, attention everyone. Today in our classroom, we're going to do Oils 101. Hey everybody, I'm Vera Stewart. And for those of you that don't know, or maybe don't remember, I used to be a home economics teacher. So I'm back in the classroom today and we're going to learn everything we need to know about cooking oils. So we're gonna start with olive oil. And this recipe is an oven fried Parmesan potato chip. You're gonna absolutely love it. You will really wow your family and friends with this recipe. The second oil is a truffle oil. And for this recipe, we're going to do a shepherd's pie. Fabulous entree, especially for this time of year. And then finally, peanut oil. And these chicken wings just plump up. I think you'll really love this recipe too. And in Vera's Corner, just because we're through in the classroom doesn't mean I don't have a homework assignment. So we're gonna talk about some other oils there. So I'm ready to get my apron on and get out of the classroom. So I hope you'll join me. Here we go. All right, so our first recipe is gonna use olive oil and we are doing an oven fried Parmesan potato chip. So, you know, olive oil is very high in antioxidants and the extra virgin olive oil is even higher. So this is a great oil to use. I love to use it when I'm doing this sort of thing because it does have a high smoke point. All right, so I have done a little bit in advance I put my safety glove on and use my old school mandolin that belonged to my mother-in-law. And you just want to thinly slice those potatoes and you're not peeling them. That's something really nice about having the skin on the potato. So then you put them down in water and let them soak. And then once you're, you're ready to begin this process, you're going to drain all of that water off the potatoes, even if it means patting them down with a little bit of paper towel. So I've put them in a bowl so I can mix the rest of this. So here's my olive oil. and my salt. So here again, it's just nice when you've got a container that you can just shake everything together. Gets it very well coated. All right, so the other thing that I did was I painted my sheet pan with olive oil and got it very nice and coated. Then I put that pan in a 350 degree oven for 10 minutes and it's just now time for it to come out. So again, this is piping hot. If you've got your young person with you in the kitchen, this is one of those that it's a little scary for them to be this close to a hot pan. If you've got an outside space, this was also big fun to do. All right, so I'm gonna keep my mitts handy because the pan is hot. Now I'm gonna just start. You should be able to hear this nice sizzle when we put these on the pan. So just be careful. I can hear it. And you know, for me, when I go to a, a restaurant and they have home fries or, you know, oven roasted potatoes, it's just one of my favorite things to order because I don't do that very often. But this is one potato. So this is something you could do just for your family. It would be a little bit trickier if you tried to do it for a crowd because there are several steps involved. But just for home one night for dinner with, with a hamburger, this would be perfect. And you want to not overlap them so you get a good even cooking throughout. So these will go back in that same oven to cook for 10 minutes. So just about there, see this pan? These are those same pans that I talk about all the time that are great for bars. They're just, they're just the perfect pan. All right, so let's get that back in the oven and then we'll get started on the next step. All right, so these have been in the oven for 10 minutes. Let's take them out and we'll start the next process. Ooh, they're just a sizzling. Love it. All right, I've got my favorite little OXO spatula that's nice and skinny. And you can use tongs, but I've found that it works better for me if I use this little spatula. So basically all we're doing is making sure both sides get good and coated. Don't you love the look of that? So I will keep 
getting these flipped over and they'll go in the oven for an additional eight minutes. Then when they come out, you're gonna transfer those to a paper towel lined baking sheet so that can absorb some of the excess oil. And then that's when you can start with all your garnish, the Parmesan cheese, and I've got some low country kettle, different seasonings that they left with me. You might remember they were on the show last season. They were just great. I love to use their seasonings. So we will finish this. And then when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on that shepherd's pie. Welcome back everybody. If you're just joining me, I've got my home economics teacher hat on today. We're talking about cooking oils. So this is cooking 101. We just finished with olive oil, those potato chips. I actually had to wipe my mouth because I've been tasting some of them during the break, but they are just delicious. And all of our recipes are always available at veryvera.com. I also want to point out my apron today. You know, this is our 12th season and I will never forget our first episode where I put this apron on for the very first time. A little, you know, it's just a little nostalgic to me to just think about how far we've come with our programming, and it's all thanks to all of you. All right, so we are ready to start on the shepherd's pie, and all we're doing now is truffle oil. So this is actually an olive oil with truffles in the oil. If the idea of truffle oil does not appeal to you, just use olive oil for this recipe instead. So we had a little bit to do in advance, and this is where the fresh market comes in so handy for us. Not only is it very convenient to where we cook in our kitchen, but it also just has a lot of unusual ingredients. For example, this truffle oil is not their brand, but they have many different brands to choose from there. The olive oil was their brand. So I always go on Tuesdays to get my chicken and my ground beef. So we picked up the ground beef and you just want to get that lightly browned because all your other steps will continue to cook that beef. So I browned it, then I added in my sweet onions, the diced carrots, which ha also has a little bit of sweetness to it, and then a butternut squash, who would think? And the way that you make this more easy to eat and not take as long to cook is that we grated the butternut squash. So once that's all combined and the recipe will tell you how many minutes you need to do for all of this, you've got this mixture ready. The other thing I did was I peeled and cooked my russet potatoes and just until they're fork tender, drained them in the sink, then put them back in the bowl so I could mash them with my hand masher. So that's where I am right now. They're mashed there. So they're still nice and popping hot. I'm gonna add in my butter. I'm gonna to revert to my hand mixer and get started with this process. And that butter will just start melting away. Now I'm gonna add in my half and half, and you can use cream if you like, but I'm gonna use half and half today. I'm gonna to put about half of this in because you know, potatoes are not an exact weight or amount. You're just picking them up, you know, from the counter. So you don't wanna to have too many, but you also want to remember that they will continue to absorb the half and half as they cook. So I'm probably gonna need every bit of this. So let me add the rest of that in. And then we've got the truffle oil that's gonna go into the potatoes as well. And you know, everybody has their preference about whether they want very whipped or if they like a little bit chunky potatoes. I kind of lend myself to the little bit chunky side. All right, so that looks pretty good right there. So let's add in the truffle oil. It's really, I love the way it smells. It's kind of woody, earthy. It just gives a great flavor profile to this dish with the butternut squash. So I've got my Parmesan cheese and you can pick this up already grated in the deli at the Fresh Market. I'm gonna put a little more than half of that into the potatoes. And then look at my cute little cast iron skillets. I mean, you can make this in a casserole dish, but if you really wanna get fancy, you can pick these up. They're not very expensive, but it just really makes for a great look. So let's add, you're gonna put about, fill these up about halfway. 
with your ground beef mixture. And I prepared these pans too with a little bit of cooking spray. And I just think this dish is so colorful. It's just great for this time of year. Then we'll put the potatoes on the top. So let me come back to that one and get these potatoes. So I've just put a nice heaping amount on the top and then I've got my little spatula so I can smooth it out. All right, so we'll get these in the oven topped with a little bit more of the Parmesan cheese and then a little sprinkle of that truffle oil to get that good flavor on that first bite. And when we come back from the break, we're gonna get started on chicken wings, which are everybody's favorite, that we're gonna use peanut oil. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Vera's Corner is brought to you by Tax Slayer. Plant oils can be used in a variety of preparations when cooking. Today I'm gonna to go over the most common and how to use them. Extra virgin olive oil is a common kitchen oil and most people use it the way they use any cooking oil. Olive oil can be used in some sauteing, but its best application is for drizzling, dipping, and dressing. Its complex flavor profiles change with high temperatures, so consider keeping your good bottle aside for using as a finishing oil. Canola oil is a great go-to for frying and sauteing because it's inexpensive and has a high smoke point. It's ideal for recipes that require large amounts of oil for frying. Sesame oil is best for sauteing and frying. With a medium high smoke point, it's perfect for coating your wok before sauteing. The sesame flavor will come through in the finished products, so it's best to use for Asian dishes. Pecan oil has a smoke point higher than most canola and sesame oils, making it great for frying and sauteing. It's generally a pricier oil, but its buttery, nutty flavor is worth it. Coconut oil is cold pressed from coconuts and can be used for low heat sauteing and for baking. It can be substituted in for butter at a one-to-one -one ratio, but just make sure it's in the form similar to your butter for a similar consistency. Keep this in mind when making your next culinary creation. Start free today at TaxLayer.com. Welcome back, everybody, and I hope you enjoyed Vera's Corner. You know, I'm in the classroom today with all of this education about cooking oils. But one last tip I want to give you is be sure to look at the expiration date because it may have expired and you're not going to pick up on that right away, but you'd be able to notice it in your recipe. All right, so this is our peanut oil recipe, and these are chicken wings that we're going to fry in peanut oil because it has a high smoke point. So it's perfect for that. One of the other things about peanut oil is you can just use plain peanut oil or you can use roasted peanut oil. So if you're somebody that likes brown butter and kind of a toasty flavor to your food, then I would recommend that you use the roasted peanut oil for this. So we had a little bit that we had to do in advance. I picked up my chicken wings at the fresh market. They're so plump and juicy looking. And then I patted them dry with a paper towel. Once I have done that, then I'm going to put them into a piece of Tupperware and sprinkle nature seasoning on top and toss them around in my Tupperware. In the meantime, I have my Dutch oven on the cooktop so I can get that oil and I've got about two or three inches up to 350 degrees. I also preheated the warming drawer that's under my M-Series Wolf oven. So I've got it on about 175 so we can keep these wings warm. I also lined my sheet pan with parchment paper and put a rack on top that once the wings are done, I can let them go to that. I placed the wings in the oil and I fried them for about seven to 10 minutes. And again, this is something you've got to observe. Once they start floating to the top and they're golden brown, they're ready to go on the rack. 
All right, so I've got the wings on the rack, and I'll put those into that preheated warming drawer. It's going to be terrific. All right, so now the peanut dipping sauce. This starts with our friends at Pearson Farms Peach Preserves. I cannot tell you how many things I've started using these preserves for because they're so flavorful, and they can really add the punch factor to any of your entrees or side dishes. I love it. So we're going to just put this on like a medium-high heat and let this reduce down by half. All right, so this is just perfect. It's coating that spatula really well and just smells amazing. Okay, to this, I'm going to add in garlic paste. And you can pick this up at the Fresh Market as well. I've got red pepper flakes and chicken broth. And this is also going to cook down and let that reduce. All right, so this is reduced down. It took about five minutes. And how in the world are you going to have a dipping sauce that has all those red pepper flakes in it? You're going to strain it. So I have a bowl. I have my strainer. And I'm just going to pour this through. And then we're going to put the strained back into this pan and add the rest of the ingredients. So let me show you a little trick here that a lot of that's not going to come through unless you take your spatula and work it through. So we don't want to lose any of this good stuff. And again, these peaches are so flavorful. They're just sweet and wonderful. Okay, that looks pretty good. So I'll push this over. So that looks pretty good right there. Let's add that back in to the pan. And I've got this on about a medium heat. And we're going to add to this our Georgia Grinders peanut butter. We use this a lot throughout the season in recipes that call for peanut butter. It's just delicious. We've got soy sauce and cilantro. So we'll get this combined. And then when we come back from the break, we're going to have a presentation that you're really going to love on how you can make this your own, and we're going to give you some great ideas. So come back with me in just a few minutes. Welcome back, everybody, and going from the school teacher in a lab coat to a fantastic presentation. I've had the best time today talking about cooking oils. And you know, many of you have commented at our info at verybira.com that you love the educational part of the show. You absolutely love the presentation part. So if you ever want to make a comment or a suggestion of an upcoming show, I hope you'll go to info at verybira.com and let us know what you're thinking. But we've really had a great time today as we do this process and as I go back to really scrutinize the recipes and what we do. I'm learning a lot myself. I find myself reading a recipe and thinking, gosh, I've never thought of doing it that way. So hopefully you'll do the same thing as you walk through and maybe make these recipes this winter when the weather's bad and you can't get outside. All right, so let's walk back through what we did today. We started with the oven fried Parmesan potato chip. And didn't I tell you they were beautiful? I mean, honestly, I've, I've had to wipe my mouth between every segment because I've been eating them during the commercials today. They are delicious. And so I wouldn't necessarily recommend this for a crowd because it is a process. But if you're just maybe having six people over for hamburgers, it's great. It goes great with beer. It's just a wonderful um way to use a potato in a different format than most people are accustomed to. So I hope you'll try that. This actually used olive oil, which was the first part of Oils 101. So that was the oil that we used today for that. The next recipe that we did used truffle oil, and that is the shepherd's 
pie. And this may not necessarily be something that people think of as Southern, but you make it Southern by putting it in a cast iron skillet. These little individual cast iron skillets are just adorable. I do want to point out that when you serve it this way, just point out that the handle is hot or maybe use a cloth napkin tied up with a piece of twine so that if somebody does touch it, want to move it on their plate, that they don't burn themselves. But we just garnished with a little bit more of the Gruyere cheese on the top and some cilantro. It just really looks great. You know, even showing it on the cooling rack is a great feature. All right, then finally the chicken wings. And you thought we were just gonna show you wings today. We're showing you an amazing presentation with those wings. So they can be served, and this used our peanut oil because it has a high smoke point. And so you can cook deep, you can cook it for the you know seven to 10 minutes that it takes to get them done, and the, the oil doesn't burn while you're doing that. So we've got two different ways to present today. You can use them just as they are, just as they came out of the oil and out of the warren drawer or you can coat them with the peanut sauce that we make and have a sticky wing but just look at this veggie tray it's just got everything from heirloom tomatoes to heirloom carrots snow peas radishes are really great on something like this we've got our dipping sauce that we made in one of the vessels but then we just ran into fresh market and picked up their honey barbecue for the second dipping sauce so I hope you'll try the recipes, veryvera.com. But better than that, I hope you'll come back and join me again next week. And remember that no matter what you do, do it in good taste. I'll see you next week.